That's, <laughs> That's uh, not our thing. No, 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 Batman and Bill. All right, fucking it. We're gonna revisit Batman and Bill. Yes, we had a big surprise after surprise right in your eyes. A couple other spots. Yep. After we we recorded Batman and Bill, our review on it a month ago. Finally got it up on YouTube, and it links automatically to our Twitter page. And we get a surprise tweet from the. I, I was shocked by this from Mr. Mark Tyler Nobleman, the creator, the director, or whatever you want to call. He wasn't him. the director, but he was okay. the source material. He wrote yes. the book, Batman right. and Bill. Yep, and he did a, all the research and everything uh, on it. Did a ton of legwork. He's the predominant focus, other than Bill Finger himself in the documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pr- pretty much. Uh, so he he reached out to us. He is um, Mark T. Nobleman on Twitter. If you want to follow him on there. But uh, initially, he he shot us a tweet, and I I was shocked. I was like, wait, holy shit! So first th- off, if you him. haven't listened to our original, <laughs> our yeah. original recording, I guess we should go back, go back to that and listen to it. <laughs> yeah, go back to listen to that. We we liked the documentary, yes. but we had some questions yes. and we had some doubts and concerns about how the story was established throughout the documentary. We emphasized that. We kind of made some smart-ass comments in the process about yes. uh, I, some messi- messiahs yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Him being a, a mark, being a mark for himself. Uh, and I believe that's the only time that I used his name in, in, in the video. So I, I wanted to make sure he got prop- proper credit in this version in our Batman and Bill follow-up, if you will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that he got proper credit for, for doing the documentary, creating it. And so that's why I gave you his his full name, his Twitter handle. He actually has a blog as well, uh, which is kind of cool. There's a lot of references, uh, interviews and stuff that he did. It's noblemania.blogspot.com if you want to check that out. Noblemania. Noblemania. <laughs> you can plug in the Hulkamania theme music. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Point around through your ear. <laughs> yeah, through the ear. No. Rip, rip the Batman and Bill t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like we're about to do about this damn movie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So it was very interesting that us, a little shit podcast, got contacted by the content creator about our review of it. He appreciated the fact that we watched it, mm-hmm. but he had some issues with how we describe things. Yes. So, so we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, basically, his initial tweet to us was, thanks for watching. Happy to cite sources for any facts. For example, it was Bob himself who said Bill designed the costume. See his autobiography, Batman and Me. Then he sends a a follow-up tweet. He said, also, I reached out to Bob's family for the book, and we reached out again for the film and did not hear back either time. So that's one of our main concerns from the original was that there was no buddy from the Kane family represented in the movie. And I get it's a documentary, and a lot of the times you're always going to get one side of the story from a documentary. It's rare if you ever actually get both sides of the story. A complete story in a documentary, but you could do what you can to try to emphasize other person's points and stuff like that. But we definitely felt that the Kane family not being shown in this at all uh, was kind of an issue. It just it really scrutinized Kane, Bob Kane himself. Yeah. One of our reply tweets to him was, "That's too bad. I'm sure they could have provided some additional insight." And and I was I was pretty disappointed to hear that he did reach out to them and they didn't they didn't want to have anything to do with it for some reason. As Matt was saying, that does kind of leave it to where it's it is very one sided. And then when you watch the documentary, you know it, it continues to paint that same picture as well. So after we replied back to him, I sent Shane a message on our text message saying I have so many questions for this guy. Yeah. And Shane decided to send me back a Man of Steel picture. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the part in the movie that's that's exactly what it reminded me of. As soon as you said that, where Kal El or uh, yeah, well Kal El or Clark, when, yeah, when he finds the ship and he goes, I have so many questions. To where Jor-El, do I come from? To yeah, Jor-El, to Jor-El. Space Ghost. that was exactly what it reminded me of. <laughs> I had Man of Steel on the mind, like always. <laughs> So then we finally were able to get the email together because it was actually kind of funny because he tweeted out his disagreement with us uh, Mm -hmm. late at night for us, um, which I think he might even be on the East Coast. I'm not quite sure where he lives. Yeah. But it might be even later for him. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So that shows how fucking much we pissed him off. Yeah. (laughs) And then again, (laughs) earlier that morning, he tweeted back at us again because we were going to email him eventually, but we were kind of, you know, taking our time on it. 
we figured he didn't have time to hear our yeah well <laughs> so how we got to the email point was uh, we tweeted him and said in your research were you able to find why finger stayed in the same spot for so long and why he continued to help Kane without getting any credit because that was a big sticking point for us right and then he said yes too long for a tweet but happy to answer by email right because i was going to keep you know corresponding via twitter which is only whatever 184 characters or whatever the bullshit they limit you to so so it was nice for him to to say yeah it was a little difficult to find his email i think i had i had to go to his blog and then it was like down at the bottom contact me or something it was a little bit more difficult than i was hoping but i so found he didn't him. willingly give it to you <laughs> no I see yeah that, it was... email me <laughs> good luck finding that yeah email. hey but we we found it and the, the correspondence was pretty awesome which uh, we want to we want to uh, give you the our listeners kind of the correspondence that we had with him you know, maybe you can understand where we were coming from and, and, you know, maybe you agree with him and say, yeah, you jackasses. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to read this pretty much verbatim because yep. that's something he requested basically from us, but we're not good enough to summarize this shit anyway. So he doesn't <laughs> no, realize. No, he's not at all. I have, I have like a <laughs> couple highlights. <laughs> <laughs> so also emphasize that uh, some of this is not like the most beautifully worded thing. You know, I was at work. Shane was at work. And we're right. both trying to, you know, do this shit while we're working. And yeah, so it's just like, I'm just trying to get to the fucking point. Right. You know? Yep. <laughs> I'm not trying to have a conversation. Yeah. I was trying to get to the point. <laughs> so we kind of switched back and forth on emails. But our email to him was hello. And that was it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Thanks for taking the time to tweet us and help us fill some of the blanks and concerns we had about the documentary. I, yeah. And this is my typo. This is what I mean by <laughs> we were Russian. It's supposed to be weird, but I put well, wheel. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, that's why I was like, "Fuck typo." I'd, or, or maybe you meant to say, "We'll be more than happy." Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, I'm just gonna do what I'm supposed to put, and uh, <laughs> we're more than happy to do a follow up show with any details that you could provide. If you have the time, we would like to ask you a few questions about the documentary. Thanks again for your time, Matt and Jane. So uh, he actually replied back really fast. Yeah, four Literally. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you looked. At, you looked. Well, at I was it? on break. Oh, okay. I'm on my first break. So okay, I was holy like, shit. I, I emailed him basically at eight twenty four our time, and then all of a sudden, like I'm still sitting there, and all of a sudden, ping! I'm like, oh shit, eight twenty seven. Yeah. <laughs> so so like, he wanted to make sure. Oh, so three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. Math, math not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Nor is our reading. So bear with us. So uh, his reply, um, which was was pretty cool. It was cool. He got back to us so quickly. He said, I felt you made a good point, as have others, that Kane's side was not represented. And perhaps we should have indicated that somehow. My main reason for reaching out to you was, was to correct your comment that not much of the film was based on speculation, when in fact, I can back up every point I make with a source, printed or original interview with a first-hand witness. I don't mind if people don't like the film, just want them to be assured it's accurate. Best, Mark. So then we replied back... That was one of our main concerns, anyway. That was yes. our that was some of our biggest issues, other than the King family not being represented. Was it's a lot of it seemed like speculation, yes, and a lot of hearsay. And so we replied back, enjoyed the documentary, weren't hating on it. Yeah, see what I mean? This is this is rushed. <laughs> <laughs> All we were saying was without the Bob Kane interview, which there was an interview with Bob Kane. Uh, where he was doing his autobiography for Batman and me. Mm -hmm. And they did show some of the clips from that. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about the Bob Kane interview. It felt like there wouldn't have been much of a story because of the lack of corroborating evidence. If we missed that in the documentary, then that's our fault. Also, I was hoping you could shed some light on why Finger would stay in the shadows for so long. Thanks again for your time. And then Mark replied... The doc, meaning the documentary, partially answers your question. Bill and Bob began working together the de during the Depression when people were grateful to have any kind of paying work, let alone working in a field they loved. It was a time when the shop system was prevalent, meaning one person, in this case Bob, organized a shop of talent to produce stories. So Bill agreed partially because it was the norm. In those days, comics were considered a low art form at best and trash at worst. Which I've I've heard that a lot. Right. So it's it's likely neither man imagined that Batman would still be around in five years, let alone seventy five. Bill might have figured it wasn't worth worth it to push for credit, but then by the time Batman was an enduring hit, Bill probably figured it was too late to speak up. 
Batman began with two guys alone in a New York City apartment, one man's word against another's, which is a big sticking point for us. And if Bill wanted to fight it legally, well, that of course takes money, and Bill had none. He may have also felt that bringing up his role in Batman may be perceived as rocking the boat and national in in uh, parentheses DC may have reduced assignments or stopped giving them altogether. So there was a lot going against Bill, which I can I can understand that. Yeah, I can understand the rocking the boat part. Yeah, this is kind of where we were kind of pointing out the hearsay. There is very little proof unless he has more of it of you know detailed information of this moment happening. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys doing this. I mean, it was in the documentary that Bob uh, got a memo, basically, or was told by somebody, come up with a superhero by Monday. Mm-hmm. And that's when this whole thing started. And they have the difference between the characters, what Bob's original creation was, which some dude in a red jumpsuit with, <laughs> like, black spandex right. shorts or something and a, and just a regular mask and some solid hard wings or something like that for, right. for a costume. And then they describe it as Bill came up with this, oh, no, it needs to be darker and so forth. That's kind of where we're talking about the speculation. Like, mm-hmm. where does that proof come from? We're not sure. Again, like he says, it's one man's story against another. Yes, exactly. And eventually in our correspondence, Mark does talk. Uh, he brings up the fact that he talked to several different Golden Age comic book writers. When you talk to all of them and they all have the same story, eventually you have to believe it. Which I, I, and you know, like I said, we'll end up, you'll hear that quote shortly, but uh, I I can understand that, but there's a huge sticking point of like, okay, it is, it's still at the end of the day, it's one man, you know, against another, basically. (laughs) Right. No, I, I do get that. I do get that. But that's just kind of what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what we were talking about. Like, it really felt like if Bob Kane's interview for his autobiography, Batman and Me, if he doesn't say that stuff, uh, I don't know. Well, so we'll continue with the emails here. So this is from us, and this is this is me right here, and I was trying to establish kind of a connection between other situations that we've had in the comic book world. And I put, see, uh, I was comparing the situation to Jack Kirby versus Stan Lee type of story. Jack Kirby might not have been as successful as Stan Lee, but he did move on and become successful. Is that wrong of me to compare the two? Also, do you think if Bob Kane doesn't say what he did in that interview, Bill Finger and the Finger family even have a chance against WB? Turn the page. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> I don't... <laughs> For all you old people out there, you'll know that one. Turn the page. Yeah. I don't even know what it's from. I just remember that. From it was audio books, like, in elementary school, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and you had to go through the book, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it's from. <laughs> so, but back to the emails. Uh, that's basically, that was our, our biggest point was, okay, Bob did kind of, uh, if I'm using this word correctly, corroborate the story that Bill was a huge hand in in creating Batman. Uh, you know, which is awesome. Bob Kane eventually, you know, says that in the interview uh, regarding Batman and me, uh, you know, during his autobiography. Yeah, yeah. That, I think, helped the the story and gave uh, Mark and Bill Finger a huge jump in... Credibility. In, yeah, yeah, in, in credibility in trying to get Bill, Bill Finger credit as a creator of Batman. I think that helps a lot. To me, that still cements this thing, but we'll continue with the emails because this goes on. Yeah. And then Mark replies, Finger and Kirby are often mentioned in the same breath, but I don't know enough about Kirby to make a more detailed comparison beyond this. Cl- clearly, Kirby died with more recognition than Finger, even if it wasn't as much as he deserved. I'm not sure what you mean by Kane slash WB question. Once Bill's name was first publicly cited in 1964, the only person who disputed that Bill was instrumental in Batman was Bob. And eventually, as you saw in the doc, even Bob admitted what Bill had done. It was just safely after Bill died. And of course, WB has already begun crediting Bill. And see, that's where I kind of think there is a little bit of a misunderstanding. Because throughout the the documentary, it kind of feels like some of it is speculation. And again, I'm we're kind of using that word speculation. It's not that he doesn't have facts or any proof by it. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's just a bunch of guys saying, yeah, Bill had a good part and, you know, had a major part 
in mm-hmm. the creation of Batman. You know, he deserves it. Bill was Batman. And there's, yeah, and I'm not saying those guys are liars or right. anything. Right, no, no, not at all. No, not at all. And there is some question that WB, they still question Bill Finger's involvement in some of this because there was a legal fight. If there wasn't any right. discussion against it or any disagreement against it, then it wouldn't have been that much of an issue. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have had to gone to a legal battle. I mean, I understand what they were trying to push for. From what I remember in the documentary, WB wanted to give some credit, but not full royalty, like not extended credit into the future. Right. And they wanted credit forever for as long. So that's kind of where it's like, well, even WB is kind of like, well, pushing back on this. And I understand that's kind of rocking the boat like that he was talking about. Yeah. And and they're they're a big corporate giant that's, you know, trying not to pay out all these royalty fees and stuff like that. And that's kind of the picture that is also painted, which right. we brought up in our original uh, post about this. This was like 10 minutes long or whatever. <laughs> that the WB, you know, is kind of painted as as an evil empire as well. So that that, that was just kind of a, a sticking point as far as Bob Kane is is a villain. You know, he's a, he's a prick. And then WB is also kind of pushing back as well. So. Yeah. So then our reply to him, I think that's where the disconnect is for us. We felt the purpose of the documentary was to prove Bill had a hand in creating Batman, not necessarily to disprove Bob's dispute, if that makes sense. Our question to you was mainly, if Bob never eventually admitted Bill's contributions, do you think Bill would have ever been credited? To us, it seemed it all hinged on Bob's interview that ultimately was the proving point for Bill. Mark's reply was, Our purpose was not to prove that Bill had a hand in creating Batman. Yes, we had to cover that, but the purpose was to document the fight to get Bill credit. I think Bob's interview and the subsequent quotation in Batman and Me, and then in parentheses, he says, Bill was the unsung hero of Batman, certainly helped in getting Bill proper acknowledgement, but I believe we could have gotten there without it. DC had been given Bill equal credit for decades, and in some cases before Bob's book came out. Also, I interviewed eight Golden Agers who all knew Bill and Bob personally, among others, and their stories aligned. Bill was the dominant creative force at the start. Bob contributed little. Never wrote a Batman story in his life. When that many people with nothing to gain tell the same version of the story, it's hard to ignore. It should be noted that DC was never publicly disputing Bill's role as early as 64. Editor Julius Schwartz credited Bill in print, to, in print with creating the Riddler, so it was simply a matter of pushing to get a company to do what individuals there already knew was the just thing. Okay, so this is kind of where I'm a little confused from the documentary. That he was pushed and credited several times in the creation of the Riddler, as he put, and other things in the, the world of DC or in Batman. Yeah. But yet the dude was penniless. Apparently getting credit means nothing unless it sells. I don't know. At the time, I don't I know. Guess. I don't yeah. know how he became penniless if he is getting a credit. Mm-hmm. See, they were also establishing these ghost writers. They were talking about how there was a lot of ghost writers involved in the Batman series because they wanted to push out so many comics. Mm-hmm. For Batman. So it kind of made it feel like, yeah, he might have, if maybe he's acknowledged in some aspect, but it sounded like to me he was a ghostwriter. Yeah. And people knew him as a ghostwriter. And he wasn't getting the money of, of a, uh, the money that a person that would be credited for such great ideas yeah. or that's producing the ideas would be getting. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's one of the big unfortunate circumstances in this is that I, it sounds to me like he was a gross writer as well, but maybe a ghost writer who was going above and beyond and creating, you know, like the Riddler. I think it was, he created several other villains. Yeah, I'm Robin, pretty sure. Gotham. Yeah. The a, Joker. A, a ton of things. So at some point, you have to you have to start sticking up for yourself and stop just you know that's why but, i use the jack kirby uh, example because kirby may not have become as big as stanley did afterwards but kirby and dicko they went to dc they yeah. started doing stuff for dc they said fuck you like yeah. we're, we're, we're not going to put up with this we're not going to get creative credit yeah you know if you're going to take it all then we're going to move on yes different era but it still feels like there's a disconnect somewhere and i don't know where i don't these he obviously has sources of these eight Golden Age writers. Yeah, I said six, I think, earlier. Yeah, I thought it was six, eight, too. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Eight is, that's, I mean, that is a, a solid number. And I, I absolutely get where Mark is coming from. I get the the push. He did all this research. Right. He interviewed eight different Golden Age comic book writers who all knew of of Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And so I, I, I get what he, what he's saying. Absolutely. There's still just some speculation in my mind, and, and obviously in yours as well, 
that maybe Bob isn't getting as much credit, I guess. And, yeah. he, you know, I guess we're now Bob Kane apologists. Or I, I don't know. It, 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 he, he the, the way he says, the way he talks in his email and in the documentary, it, it pretty much flat out lays out that fucking Bob Kane was probably the shittiest human being alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. not the shittiest human being alive, because there's obviously <laughs> no, no, dictators but, yeah. and all that stuff. But when it came to the comic book world yeah. in, in, this era, in this time, and someone that's so well-recognized Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's got the famous O in his name with Bob and right. it's on every comic and shit like that, or every Batman comic in any way. It's, it's a big deal. And he just sounds like the shittiest person. Yeah. They just, they, I mean, this, which I, I guess that is ultimately the big problem that we have had because yeah. if, if you go on to Twitter and you know, and you're looking up things, even on, on Mark's Twitter, there's a ton of people, which again, we love this documentary as well. We uh, applaud the efforts that Mark put into the this. The dude went to the guy's house. Yeah. Bill Finger's <laughs> house to kind of just get the absorb it in. You right, know, this yeah. is where he was. This is where he lived. I guess where he died. Yeah. And um, it, so he was dedicated to this yeah. shit. I'm not doubting any no, of his, no, no. his efforts at right. all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not at all. But uh, I, the big thing for us is people were on Twitter were, were quickly to be like, holy shit, Bob Kane is a jackass. Yeah. I can't believe he's, you know, all these years he, he pretty much did nothing and is getting credit for it. And Matt and I are kind of on the other side where we're like, really? He, he did absolutely nothing. And, and that he was just the hype man. Yeah. Holla, holla, yeah, holla, I, I holla, guess holla, so. Holla, Batman, 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 Batman. <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess that's, I guess that's, that's the way this uh, documentary and the way even uh, Mark's emails to us yeah. uh, kind of come off is that he was just basically a poster boy yeah. of, of Batman. Yeah, and he that, that jack enjoyed shit. the spotlight, enjoyed the money, the success, the fame and everything of Batman, but, but really didn't create a whole lot. And, and you know, he talks about the eight golden age writers and they all have the same story. And I'm not going to put any speculation on what they say, but there is people, if Bob King was that big of a piece of shit, <laughs> you might actually get eight guys that say, fuck that dude. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, fuck that dude. I'm siding with Bill. The, yeah. The, I really that. Start, I'll cite with Bill any day. Yeah. Oh, that piece of shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so I'm not saying that they would make something up necessarily, but they might exaggerate. Yes. Some things just because if Bob King was that much of a piece of shit. Yeah. Holy fuck. That's all right. <laughs> I guess I mean, how I, honest are you really going to talk about a piece of shit? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, you're going to hate the fucker. They might have, he might have screwed them somehow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Who knows? So then I'll reply the last thing here on this email. Shane's going to take over now because I'm having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> we were struggling a little bit. Take 12. <laughs> Uh, so our, our final email to him was, thank you for clarifying this. I guess we were observing your documentary with a different eye and interpreted it in our own way. We appreciate the time you took to email us back and forth regarding the questions we had. We are in awe by the amount of work you put into it and happy to see Bill get the credit he deserves. With your consent, we would like to bring up this email correspondence in our next podcast and discuss some of the details you have enlightened us with. And then his last reply, which I didn't include in our piece of paper, was basically yes. Uh, as long as know. we quote him directly. Yes. So That's why we read it verbatim. Yeah. So you got the full the full thing, the full correspondence back and forth with both of us or, you know, with with all three of us. So it's, again, the documentary is good. It's a yeah. good documentary. It's worth a watch. Yeah. A lot, a lot of really good information in there. But again, I just uh, I'm happy that the Finger family got the credit that they deserve for the most part. Yeah, like we said in the first, last one. We yeah, said that in our last documentary. But there is just again, it is a man's one man's word versus another man's word. Yes. And then some other guys that may have been burned by one guy. <laughs> right. And so sounds like Bob Kane, no matter what, was a dick. <laughs> yeah, he was apparently a flaming douchebag. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, we're we're happy to see the progress and everything that Mark did that he put into this documentary and continues to do. I mean, he emailed yeah. two idiots. So yeah, yeah, pretty much Tw and and tweeted forth. out at both of them. Yeah. We have a whopping thirty views on YouTube. <laughs> and and he, he I was making that joke at work. It's like there's the time there's like. Five views. Fuck these dudes. <laughs> yeah. All right, they want to talk shit about my talking <laughs> shit. Five views. They corrupted at least four people. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe those four people are like, man, these guys are idiots. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it was really cool for him to to go back and forth with us to to really take that time. Uh, so we, we were in even in all by that. To be honest, that we we're like, holy shit, we're like we made the joke of. We had five whopping views, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to these guys, maybe help them guys. understand a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, which I, I think ultimately he did i understand his side why he created the documentary the way that he did 
Right. I, I understand that now, now completely. And I also, I believe that I watched it and, and took away the information I was supposed to take away with it. I just had uh, different results. Exactly. <laughs> the same results as me. Yeah. <laughs> and we watched it separately. Yes, and we came did. to the same conclusion. Yeah. So we're two bunch of idiots. <laughs> Trailer trash unite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fight song <laughs> fuck so thanks again to Mark Nobleman I don't know what his middle name was Tyler I believe yeah there Mark T. Nobleman on Twitter I know yeah. that it sounds like he's really interactive with people especially yeah. on Twitter uh, he reposts everybody's nice tweets and even the jackasses that <laughs> yeah he reaches out to you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. even the jackasses that might disagree or have some issues with this yes. with the documentary so if you have any questions I'm sure you can find them on Twitter mm -hmm. at Mark T. Nobleman <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> okay. I just make it sure. Yeah. Yep, we got it. <laughs> you know that social media shit better than I do. <laughs> so. Sort of. <laughs> and then uh, and then also hit, visit his blog spot, uh, noblemania.blogspot.com. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Brother. Brother. All right. You just did Macho Man, by the way. I know. <laughs> it's the mega powers. Oh, uh, true, true. <laughs> Handshake. <laughs> All right, leave Ooh. me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> no one, Put my no hand one knows. Out. No one knows. Put my hand out and he leaves me hanging. <laughs> he just well, looked at my hand like... <laughs> Don't, don't, don't you remember there was like anticipation yeah. that ooh, yeah, yeah there's the handshake <laughs> still didn't do it actually <laughs> Just, well we're a bunch of sweaty guys in, yeah this room's our, warm in our beautiful studio <laughs> yeah maybe i'll decorate this sunday yeah maybe we'll have a YouTube we got a video. tree in the corner but it's in a box <laughs> <laughs> and it's a christmas tree <laughs>